I'm back. Rodrance for the Matrix and Road show. And the other day I did a video about the fact that Netflix sent out a get on board or get the hell out memo. Okay, now last year, David Chappelle's The Closer came out and it ruffled a lot of feathers in the woke activism world. The trans employees, the LGBT elemental P community outraged. Netflix took a lot of backlash because they made it clear they were going to support Dave Chappelle. Why? Because Dave Chappelle makes them money. Number one most watched stand-up, I believe, in the history of Netflix, which we know houses a hell of a lot of big-time stand-ups over there on Netflix. Well, Netflix has also been taking a beating from a subscriber standpoint, putting out way too much social justice and woke content well they sent a memo out saying look we're we're doing all we're going to support all kinds of creativity if you don't like that as an employee if it triggers you if it offends you then you need to get out well guess what and i think elon musk acquisition or potential acquisition of twitter has exposed a lot to some of these companies that thought what was going on with Twitter, the people on Twitter, is the people they were making decisions on because I think they, th honestly, I think some of these companies thought this was the climate of the country. When we have since found out, it has since been exposed that Twitter was actually stifling a lot of conservatives and Republicans, Americans on that platform. They're not being stifled anymore. The algorithm has shifted. You can... You can tell something has been done. Well, money talks too. The Blaze. Netflix scraps multiple woke projects for, quote, creative reasons, including anti-racist baby and stamped racism, anti-racism, and you. Who greenlighted those projects to begin with? Netflix drew swift backlash from some pr progressive critics this week after news broke that the streaming service had pulled the plug on several woke animated projects. Animated projects? Are you kidding? Among the projects scrapped were Anna DuVernay's anti-racist baby with Dr. Ibrahim K. Kendi, an animated adaptation of CRT author's book, and the hybrid documentary Stamped Racism, Anti-Racism, and You. Variety reported on Tuesday citing sources at Netflix. Another project by DuVernay called Wings of Fire also was canceled. Fire! DuVernay, a film producer well-known for her works from Selma, 13th in A Wrinkle in Time, she co-created a Netflix documentary, a Netflix series about Colin Kaepernick's life and experiences with racism in which the former professional quarterback equated being an NFL player to slavery even though he's begging to get back in the league. That's unbelievable hypocrisy. Kendi is an American author and CRT scholar who rose to national fame in recent years for his proclamation of anti-racist ideology derived from his book, quote, How to Be an Anti-Racist. All right. Netflix has been forced to make several staff and budget cuts in recent days following a dismal start to the year that saw a net decline of 200,000 employees, its first subscriber decline in more than a decade. Those cuts included layoffs of an estimated 150 staffers in addition to 70 more part-time staffers from its animation studio. However, the company sources reportedly told Variety that its decision to scrap the animated projects was for, quote, creative rather than cost-related reasons, meaning... They would have taken place regardless of the company's slower revenue growth. The outlet said, whoa, no matter what, they were getting cut. That reasoning made matters worse for the streaming service in the eyes of progressive critics. Oh, the root. Good God. In a scathing reboot, rebuke of the recent decisions, BIPOC news blog, The Root. Boy, that's a racist uh, on online publication if there ever was and racist, as in they hate white people with a passion, accused the streaming service of disproportionately targeting black and other minority projects and staffers for cancellation. 
quote, at this point, there probably isn't any explanation that can be given when it comes to black, brown, indigenous, APPI, and LGBTQ plus folks losing their livelihoods, especially when most of them were recruited for their expertise, experience, and talents in the first place, the article stated. No, they were recruited to um, put together woke projects, and Netflix realizes those don't pay the bills. Goodbye. The blog also claimed that Netflix earlier staff layoffs predominantly affected minority workers. Quote, most of the immensely talented folks who got left go were BIPOC. What is that supposed to be? Biracial or persons of color? Is that what that is? That what that is? And or members of the LGBT plus community who worked under several of the streamers popular arms dedicated to highlighting and promoting diverse content, it said. The news comes as Netflix only recently issued a blunt statement to woke employees who wish to silence artists who produce content they find offensive. Huh. In a stern update to its corporate culture memo, last week the company vowed not to cancel artists just because the employees don't prefer their content. Quote, not everyone will like or agree with everything on our service. The update states, While every title is different, we approach them based on the same set of principles. We support the artistic expression of creators we choose to work with. The program for a diversity of audiences and taste. We let viewers decide what's appropriate for them versus having Netflix censor specific artists or voice. And then it adds, if you find it hard to support our content breath, Netflix said this may not be the best place for you. I mean, it was a true get on board or get out. We're not, we're not stifling anybody, but, but look, they're also in the business to make money and they say all these projects they had and look, they've got the numbers for all of their series, everything they've ever released. They know how many people watch them and they know what that equates to in dollars and cents. These woke projects we know we've seen when it comes to, you know, big budget films, independent films when when people try to put out woke content or when a television show goes woke people quit watching let's just be real people turn it off it quit it's it tanked star wars it absolutely destroyed star wars i mean it's it's something that caused lucasfilm those two last sequel trilogy movies lucasfilm probably lost two to three billion dollars on those films in potential revenue because they decided to make those political and social statement movies. It, and don't think that doesn't happen on Netflix. Look at everything that's happened to the CW and the Arrowverse. The Flash was rolling along. It was the highest rated show on CW. It went woke and the ratings plummeted. Batwoman was dead on arrival because we knew it was nothing but a social justice shit show. From the very beginning, Legends of Tomorrow went woke, just got canceled. I mean, that's how this shit works. People don't want to see this crap, okay? And Netflix, having looked at their bottom line, said, no, these shows don't make money. These shows don't make money. Woke content don't make money. People don't like to be preached to or or, or, or lectured in their entertainment content so people don't watch it plain and simple tell me what you think matrix and roadshow fans netflix is course correcting quick i still think it's got something to do with elon musk potentially buying twitter the conservative voices all of a sudden getting much louder on public forum and some of these companies going oh crap were we wrong this whole time did these other voices always exist? We just couldn't see them because look, that Twitter employee and that in that leaked video said they were censoring conservative and Republican voices. Yeah. Tell me what you think. Disney, you're next. Peace. I'm out till next time. <laughs>